right, guys, I got the juice out so you know it's time for a real talk. Real talk, and I bet I wasn't even in focus for that. Maybe I should have shook the juice, though. Whoa, it's so different. All right, so a couple of you guys, or maybe it was just one, during my live stream asked me about my uh, BMW M2, like where it is and what's going on with it and all that. And uh, so for, for anyone that doesn't know, on September 2nd, someone sideswiped my car. Uh, it was completely their fault and, and all that. Uh, and I don't have collision on the car because I own it. So uh, I was limited in what I, I was. Well, I haven't collected anything yet, but I'm limited in what I can collect from insurance, uh, depending on how much liability coverage the driver has, which was $10,000. Also, uh, I want like my hair in this shot, but... So also, um, there were a couple other cars in the accident that she caused. So they get a portion of that $10,000 as well. So I'm assuming based on the damages to their car and what I believe like a mechanic would charge to fix their cars, I'd probably get six to $7,000 out of that. And I know I was stupid not having collision. I thought like I was saving money and like, I seriously drive maybe like one or two miles a day in the city with an average speed of like 15, 17 miles an hour. So yeah, that's that. So then the next option would be suing the driver of the vehicle. And uh, then if she doesn't have any money, then it's uh, kind of a lost cause. I, I'm not going to get anything out of it. So the other day, uh, so when you're in a car accident, you're entitled to the property damage, the cost to fix your car, uh, diminished value, uh, the cost that your car is now worth because your car is worth less now that it's been in an accident. Like no one wants to buy a car that's been in an accident. And then also loss of use. So uh, since my car is for my YouTube channel, I would uh, I would be entitled to loss of income, but I don't, really don't make that much on this YouTube channel anyway. There, there was like projected income from it because I did have a ton of videos planned and everything, including the M2, but I don't know. I'm not going to argue that, but also the loss of use uh, entitles you to uh, the cost it would be to rent the same car for every single day that you don't have that car. So here's the paper showing like total damages to me based on uh, based on uh, diminished value, loss of use, and everything else that it cost me. So diminished value, I have at 42,58.50, and that's, there's a formula 17C that insurance companies use. Uh, the other, there's two ways that they do it, the formula 17C or the, uh, or they take 33% of the value of the car, which, if I took that, it would be like $18,000 or something like that that I would have had. But just for simplicity, I just went with this. I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to see any of this money anyway. Uh, the police report I had to buy because of the accident, uh, $15. The expel to repair the expel that was damaged on the car. So that's uh, the entire driver's side. Uh, and then the hood, the roof, and, and the trunk, and uh, the bumpers and stuff because... They have to blend the paint into them. So all that, uh, $5,300. The repair estimate to my car, $19,000. That's just for the damage from the BMW dealership to fix like the headlight, the fenders, the wheels, uh, the tires, all that stuff, the control arms and, and all that. Loss of use. So the way that I figured out, oh, I have to put the camera better. The way that I figured out loss of use was uh, when on Toro, and uh, looked up BMW M2s, got maybe like five or six of them, then averaged their cost of how much it is to rent them. And uh, so September 2nd is when my car was uh, hit, and now it's November 29th or something like that. Also, I emailed Expel because the paint has to dry before you can reapply the Expel. So for anyone that doesn't know, Expel is a clear wrap that goes over the paint of your car to protect the paint. 
So Expel wants the paint to dry for 30 to 45 days before you apply the Expel. So there's an additional 30 to 45 days in there. And then uh, also two weeks for them to put the Expel on is what the estimate is. Uh, it'll probably take shorter than that, but that's, that's the estimate. So in total, I have 162 days projected without my car. Uh, it's already been 90, and then the 45 days to the for the paint to dry is 125, and then two weeks on top of that. Then also my car is still like two to three weeks away from being fixed, apparently. I'll talk about that in a second. So I also have the front, reflect, front reflectors deleted uh, and replaced with painted ones, so that's 175. Uh, the ceramic coating, which I did myself, uh, two bottles, cost me $174. I, I purchased this stuff already. Uh, the filing fee for the court case is $181. The fee that I was charged from Coinbase to sell the Ethereum that I sold. So yeah, in total, uh, almost $55,000 I would be entitled to. Now, like I said, I'm not going to see any of that. The funny thing about Collision if I did have collision on my car, I could have sued the insurance company for all this money. So all the money that I thought I was saving from from not having collision, this judgment would have paid for collision for like 10 years if I, if I had collision on my car, because like I said, I could sue the insurance company. So anyway, like uh, mid, either beginning or mid-October is when I put a deposit down on my car at the BMW dealership to get it fixed, because I didn't want it just sitting there waiting for lawsuits to go through and everything, because that's kind of an inconvenience on the BMW dealership. Like, uh, they just want cars out of there. They just want to fix them and get them out of there and, and make money and all that. So I didn't, I didn't want to do that to them. So, and also like I wanted my car back too and, and all that. So I put a deposit down. It was either beginning or middle of October. I have the receipt, but it doesn't really matter. And now it's at, at almost December, November 29th. So it's been like one and a half to two months they've had my car already. Uh, I talked to them two or three weeks ago and they're like, oh, it'll be done in another two or three weeks. Uh, so then I saw them uh, a week or two ago and they're like, oh yeah, it'll still be another two to three weeks. So I don't know when it's going to get done. I was going to go there and ask them if I could see my car today just because like I miss it, but I didn't want them to think like I was uh, going there to look at it to like... Uh, like eavesdrop or something like that. I don't know, that just went through my mind, but I do really like miss my car and all that. So a couple of days ago, and, and I was talking to a lawyer about all this, but uh, he just stopped talking to me, like he stopped answering my emails and everything. So that's one of the other reasons that I decided to go with this small claims case instead of a full uh, lawsuit against the driver, because the driver probably doesn't even have I guess it would be like $49,000 or something to to pay me. I doubt she even has that money. So I, so I think it would just be more extra expenses on my part, ba paying for a lawyer and all that to do a, a regular lawsuit. And from what uh, the magistrate and everyone told me, I can't, I can't file a regular lawsuit on my own. So I'm kind of stuck doing a a small claim, small claims case. The lawyer that I was actually talking to, it took me like two weeks of calling like 10, 15, 20 lawyers before someone would even like take my case or, or I mean someone would even talk to me because like they know that there's no money in it from that for them because uh, like the driver probably doesn't have any of this money and stuff which like, it sucks. You should be able to do an asset check before you sue someone so you could like better plan things out. So, uh, lost my train of thought. So yeah, a couple of days ago, I ended up filing this small claims case and they said in like four to six weeks, I'll uh, get a trial and, and all that. Like it takes time because they have to like mail the letter via certified mail or some stuff like that. So it's gonna take time before I can get a court case. So, I did end up buying awesome new parts for the M2 as well. Uh, I did, I think I talked about it in, in my Instagram posts and uh, on Twitter or something. So I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the cool stuff that I got now. So the first cool thing that I got is coilovers for the car. So these will lower the car and also it has uh, 
adjustable so the height is fully adjustable you just twist the shock here and it'll raise and lower the car up and down then it has compression and rebound dampening uh, adjustments so this would adjust how uh, how stiff it is uh, pushing in and then rebound will adjust how stiff it is or uh, how forceful it is returning to stock position so these are the rear ones these are the the front ones this is my first time having coilovers on my car so i'm like super excited for them uh, my saab 93 just has lowering springs and uh different shocks in it like a little bit stiffer shocks but this yeah this this is yeah exciting so also what's exciting i did end up getting four snow tires for the car so it only snowed once here and the farmer's almanac says that it's not going to snow that much this year so uh hopefully that's not the case but it should be good to take it out in the snow and everything it's going to be a blast so these are the rear tires and just look at it unlike my hand how how wide this is like i guess it's like over a foot uh over a foot wide and then these ones are about 10 inches wide so these tires back here are the stock tires that are 245 and 265 so uh it's it's one 265 on top and one 245 on the bottom so if we repeat the same thing and do one rear and one front here you can see uh yeah there's quite a bit extra uh extra wideness going on with the new tires and i love that so uh i know some of you guys are probably going to comment on uh say like hey anthony narrow tires are what's better for uh what's better for i need lighting better for winter and the the theory is is that narrow tires will uh will dig into the snow better and cut through the snow better. Most of like, I'm not driving in the snow. So I think like the wider tires will have uh, more traction. Say if like, uh, say if I like am on ice, like the tires aren't gonna cut through ice for one thing. So they'll give me more grip there. Why am I out of breath? And also say like the car is getting sideways, like fishtailing. Uh, the wider tires should give it more lateral lateral bite, lateral grip, I guess, to, to stop it from doing that. And the same, like, say I have my wheels turned, but the car is sliding and still going straight. Uh, I should have more lateral grip on the front tires to, to catch it and uh, get the steering back. That's my theory. Uh, another reason I got them so wide uh, is because the tires that I want to run on the car are, like, normally... I want to move over to a 265, 285 setup. So when I get the suspension installed and dialed in and everything, uh, that's going to be done. It looks like probably January is when that'll start happening. Uh, so the snow tires are going to be on the car. And if I have the right size snow tires as what I'm running regularly, then uh, then yeah, it'll, it'll be good. But... Right now, I'm running 255, 275 on the car, which I ended up buying wheels and tires off of a BMW M4 because I scratched one of the wheels and, and wanted it to be perfect, and I couldn't just buy one wheel I used. So I on the form, it's, it's a long story or a, a pointless story. So anyway, I, I have 255, 275 on there now. The goal, like the plan is to eventually run out of, because I, I still have over there the stock tires I was showing you that's 245 and 265. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is moving the 265 stock tires to the front of the car eventually when the 255, 275s uh, wear out. Take the stock ones, move the 265s up front and then sell the 245s and then put 285s on the back. So with that in mind that I currently have 255 275s on the car i did end up just buying some and and what's in this box is uh is what i'm gonna get to oh my god so i did end up buying uh four five millimeter spacers so they're they're pretty thin but uh yeah so that'll push the tires out uh, just a little bit. It, it should be the same. It should be the same distance as if I were to have 265, 285s on the car. Also, when I bought the suspension, the coilovers, these came with it for free, and I don't want them. I'm gonna put up a picture right here. 
of uh, what these look like on the car. Basically, they remove the red rear reflectors and replace them with these gloss black ones. I'm not going to use these. I don't like the way it looks, so these are for sale. Also, I ended up buying all new emblems for the car. So like the BMW emblems on there. And the difference with these, and I don't know, you guys let me know if I should use them. I'm kind of leaning towards not using them. And these are like a hundred dollars a piece too. So the difference with these is normally there's a chrome trim around it. Uh, this is for like the, the trunk and then this one's for the hood. And then these four are for the wheel caps. And uh, yeah, so it just gets rid of the chrome trim around there. And I don't really like them. I was looking at them like in the wheels and stuff. If you guys want me to use them, let me know and, and I'll, I'll use them. I just don't, don't think I like them that much. So these are probably gonna be for sale soon as well. So that's not even it. There's, I guess about three more things to talk about that I bought. So right up here, I don't have them yet. I ordered all this stuff on Black Friday because there was gigantic sale that I, I was gonna buy all this stuff anyway. So I figured I'd buy it now since, uh, so these dine in sway bars, front and rear new sway bars, and uh, they'll, uh, I guess I can get complicated. So they'll stiffen up the suspension, but not, not in like making the spring stiffer. Basically like, so if you have a stiffer rear sway bar, it'll make the car fishtail more. And that's not what I want. I want it to be like a grip car, like a track car. So, so a rear sway bar will work like you'll stiffen up the back suspension. So then when all the power transfers to the back, uh, it won't squish down the suspension and everything. So then, uh, so all the power will go directly to the wheels and then that'll make the wheel spin if you have enough power to do that. Uh, and then that'll make it like spin tires means you could do like fish tails and stuff. The reverse of that is having a looser or a, a softer rear sway bar. And, and these dining ones are adjustable. So you can dial in exactly what you want. Uh, so the reverse of that is having a softer one. So then when you put the power down, it will, or when you nail the gas or whatever, it'll transfer the weight to the back and it'll compress the suspension and uh, keep the tires from spinning. So this will be better for acceleration. And then like, uh, say you're coming into a turn and uh, taking accelerating out of the turn, it'll put more power down to there and, and increase your acceleration. The opposite of that is true for the front sway bar. So a stiffer front sway bar, I'm just gonna gloss over this real quick, but, but a thicker and stiffer front sway bar will give you more direct steering and uh, yeah, whatever. So yeah, that's that. I also got the Wagner Competition 2 Evo, Evo Competition 2 intercooler right up here. So this is a tube and fin intercooler. There's, there's two differences. There's bar and plate and tube and fin. The bar and plate ones are heavier and they're supposed to dissipate, dissipate heat better because uh, there's more surface, not surface area, but thermal, thermal mass. So the same way like a computer heat sink, uh, an air-cooled computer heat sink or, or a radiator, the bigger the radiator or the bigger the heat sink, the, the more heat is dispersed away from the, the CPU. So I didn't get the barn plate one, I got the tube and fin one because it's lighter. It's like 15, 20 pounds lighter or something than, like that. And uh, I don't, it, it's good enough for what I'm doing. Let's just put it that way. It, it's also the, the most expensive one, it's $900. And with the sale, I got $135 off of that. So lastly, I did get a tune for the car and it's the boot mode tune. So this'll let me, uh, if I go to a tuner with a dyno and everything, they'll be able to tune the car for me. But it comes with a bunch of OTS, like off the shelf tunes it is. So. Uh, just pre pre tunes that other tuners have made and stuff. So there's a stage one, which I don't know how much horsepower it'll make. I, I asked for graphs and whatever, and no one has them. The stage two uh, will give you 400 horsepower at the wheels. I think it's like 450 or 475 a torque at the wheels. So I'll have access to both of those tunes and, and all the other tunes that are available. So yeah, the car. The car from the factory makes like 330 horsepower at the wheels. So yeah, we're looking at 70 more horsepower and like 
well over 100 more foot pounds of torque. So yeah, all this stuff, the tires the BMW dealership is gonna put on the car when it's done. Uh, then the coilovers and the intercooler and uh, whatever else I mentioned. I don't think I'm so, and then when the expel gets done, cause the expel is getting done by a different mechanic. The same mechanic that's doing the expel is doing the sway bars and coilovers and, and all that stuff. And, and the intercooler that's probably going to happen in January or so. So there it is. That's everything going on with my M2 right now. I miss my car so much. And uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of cool that I sold more Ethereum when it was like $240. And then now it's like 120 or 110 or so. So when this lawsuit does go through, if it's the prices are the same, I could buy back more Ethereum than I ended up selling. But also with the having to sell this year and everything, like it pushed me up into a higher tax bracket. So I do have to pay more taxes than I was planning on for this year and all that. But that's the end of this video. Uh, take care, guys. Thank you and goodbye.